Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our masterclass on how to attract exceptional talent in a difficult market. I think we're all kind of dealing with this problem at the moment, certainly in Australia. And I'm Alex, for those who I have not met, and I head up People and Culture for Employment Hero. So what will we cover today? We're going to talk about how to find your exceptional candidate. So we don't want to lower our bar in this really competitive market. We're going to talk about the candidate experience, which has really changed and shifted since COVID and hybrid and remote work. We'll also talk about how technology can help you to source talent. And then how do you develop your employer brand to make sure you're attracting the right people? And we'll also talk about the importance of referral networks. And we'll get to Q&A at the end. There is a Q&A box uh, just down the bottom. If you could throw any of your questions in there, we'll make sure we get to them at the end. So let's uh, kick off. We'd love to start with a poll and our fabulous Sophia from marketing will um, put this one on the screen for you. We would love to know how difficult it has been for your business to find and hire the right people most recently. And I'll just wait for a few people to answer to that. I'll say somewhat difficult and submit my response. Doesn't let me. Um, we have definitely, certainly personally here at Employment Heroes seen um, a big shift in the market, especially across Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. Um, we're not yet seeing what we're seeing in the UK and the US. So we'll now pull up the results to see how everybody is doing. So 49%, so pretty much half of people are finding it extremely difficult the other half are finding it somewhat difficult. So it obviously is a very important topic. And according to a recent 2022 global talent report, one in four human capital leaders say that scarcity is a major pain point for 2022. So talent is on the minds of anyone in HR or people and culture, also on the minds of CEOs and leadership teams of small to medium businesses. The Australian unemployment rate is at the lowest it has been in the last 48 years at 3.4%. Now, we've been predicting that that will trend up. However, there have been reports on the ABC with economists of late saying that it could dip as low as 2%. So we may not see a change in this competitive talent market for a while. So let's have a chat about defining exceptional candidates or people. So you always have to start with your core values. So you need to know what they are and act with them. And as leaders, you really need to live by them, whether you're working in person in the office or remotely or hybrid. So if you think about a community that you live in where values are extracted and felt, they're not scripted. They come from what is shared and quite often unwritten, but they really create a belonging and together they act as a compass. Within an organisation, our values certainly drive our behaviours of our people. We also base our reward and recognition program on all of our five values, where we can recognise team members based on those values across the entire company so that we are reinforcing the behaviours that we expect. So how do you apply these core values to attracting talent? Make sure you include them in your job ads and also subtly in tones. So what do they mean? Are they on your career website? So when people actually research you, which candidates do a lot these days, can they easily find your values, which tell everyone the kind of behaviour you expect? Some of ours, teamwork, bold and ambitious, innovation. They really speak to what we expect of our people. 
And can you perhaps take this a step further? We've done employee testimonials on LinkedIn and other places where employees talk about our values. Some really recent research has shown that you have three times the impact on your employer brand if you actually have your employees speak themselves rather than the company speaking about things such as values and EPV. Now, if you don't have values, which a lot of small businesses don't get the time to do, please go to our website and look at our resources for how to create values for your business. It's about getting your people together and as a, a shared group, defining those values, making sure you implement them, you live them, you make them as part of your performance management reviews as well. And again, you use them as um, a way to find exceptional people. Here at Employment Hero, we use and base a lot of what we hire on the ideal team player by Patrick Leonucci. He has written some amazing books, um, one of many, many, too many books to go through, actually. But one of the things we really like to base ourselves on in terms of hiring exceptional people are those that meet this ideal team player profile. And they are people who are humble. So they they, they show hu humility. So they're not about um all about themselves. They are giving other people credit when they've actually been involved in a project themselves or even led, led a project, but yet they give other people credit. Hunger. Hunger is huge because people who are hungry are intrinsically motivated. They're diligent. They want to go that step further. They want to prove themselves. And especially in a leadership role, you want someone who's hungry and who's going to inspire the rest of your team. And then we look for people who are smart. This is not necessarily IQ intelligence. It's all about emotional EQ. So how do you conduct yourself in a group situation or with others in the most effective way? And there are great questions if you do Google the ideal team player. Patrick does have questions on his website where you can test for people, whether they're humble, hungry and smart, through behavioural questions where they will give you examples throughout an interview of showing whether they do display and live these three core values. Another poll. Um, so have you defined your core values? Let's see how many of us um, have defined them as a company, as well as the expected attitudes and behaviours. I'll give one second for that to people to answer. Um, and just so you know, those three values, humble, hungry, and smart, um, are not our values at Employment Hero. They do come from that, that particular publishing from Patrick. So I will now show the results. And we are at, oh, wow, that's fantastic. Congratulations. 80% of people attending have already defined their values. 13% no, and 7% are unsure. So for those who haven't, please go to our website and to our resources. They will help you go through a process of how you can get teams together. You can even use surveys to be able to define your values and make sure that they are instilled within your company as well as your interviewing process and your hiring managers. So how do you develop a great candidate experience? The candidate experience has changed over the years. The most rapid change, as we've seen with a lot of things, has been since COVID, hybrid work and remote first work has been introduced. So now we have the option to go global. Would you believe before COVID, we hired people that were probably within a 20 minute commute to our Sydney office hub. And when COVID hit and we went remote first, we expanded to all of Australia. 
our talent pool grew enormously. And it's just fantastic because it also provides employment for people that may not have been able to come into Sydney before or people with a disability or um, caring responsibilities for children or elderly people. And we really have found it so incredible. We've also had employees who have been with us for years who've taken the opportunity to go and move for three hours south to either be with their parents, three hours north to be able to finally buy that dream home with four bedrooms rather than living in a hugely expensive Sydney home where they can only have two bedrooms. Online networking in terms of the candidate experience has really skyrocketed since COVID. And that's all about LinkedIn and reaching out to people. I'm sure you've all noticed that you get pinged more often in emails and there's a lot more content on LinkedIn. So make sure you're using LinkedIn as an online networking to get your EVP out there and to attract the best talent and people. Interviews are also more diverse than ever. We're doing virtual, sometimes we're doing in person, and sometimes we're doing over the phone. But whatever it is, just make sure you have guidelines for your managers and that you stick to those. Because candidates now have the, the decision and the power. So they can go on and check your website. They can check glass door to see your ratings. So you need to make sure you are creating an amazing experience as a candidate goes through their hiring process. Data is also incredibly accessible in this world. And the great thing about technology is that now recruitment and onboarding and induction and the entire employee life cycle management can all be done through the one system online, one login, and it's all in the one place. According to recent research, 60% of job seekers quit in the middle of filling out online job applications simply because it's too complex. So make sure your application process is simple uploading a resume and maybe one or two questions. One question we found really useful, which is quite awkward to be asking when you don't want to advertise a salary, is, hi, we don't want to waste anyone's time. So could you please place your salary or expected salary in here so we're not wasting your time and you're not wasting our time? And it's just a great way to make sure you're weeding out those people that might be 100K over your budget, which... Um, I know everyone is saying that nothing is happening with salaries. People, are, their expectations are just going up at the moment. So there is a cost to a poor candidate experience, which is really, um, you, you have to understand it, but also you need to educate your hiring managers about the cost of them giving a candidate a bad experience. So you could lose someone who would be amazing talent. There's also word of mouth. And it's not just word of mouth amongst peers or colleagues of theirs, a candidate. They might jump onto Glassdoor or even LinkedIn and give you a really poor review. That impacts your employer brand proposition. It also impacts your corporate brand and it impacts your current employees, especially if they're looking on Glassdoor and seeing those reviews. It makes them question, is the company and the brand I'm working for really one that I want to be aligned with? The next one is a really lengthy process of time to fill or time to hire. So at Employment Hero, we've taken a step back as the market has become tougher and we assessed every single function and how long our interview process was to make sure we pulled it back to being as simple as it could be, yet, you know, make sure it's stringent and that you're hiring the right people. However, we were absolutely losing candidates because we were waiting too long for the last um, interview or for an interview with the team, for example. 
A really great example is with our sales team. What we did was a 45 minute interview. The first half of that was people and culture and the hiring manager, the senior um, global head of sales. And then the second half, we'd have two team members pop into the same Google Meets and they would take over so that they could meet some team members. So then you've got 45 minutes that you're taking up of a candidate's time. They're meeting two different people, but it's all within that same time frame. Now, you also have to create some kind of memorable candidate experience. You want people to walk away going, if they got the job, obviously, that's fantastic. But also, if they've got a competing offer, you want them to be accepting your offer. Now, if unfortunately they were unsuccessful, you want them to talk about the experience of interviewing with you as being incredible. So make sure that all of your social media really reflects your brand and has testimonials and your values, your mission and your purpose. Because remember, there are platforms such as Glassdoor that candidates check all the time. Align your candidate experience with your culture. A really great way to do this and be mindful that there is a lot of power on the candidate these days. They have choices. They're interviewing with multiple people. They're getting numerous in-mails during the week from competitors about jobs. So you want to train your hiring managers to really showcase your culture through the interview, even if it's virtual. The best way we've found to do that is for the hiring manager to kick off the interview with what they love about the company or why did they start working with Employment Hero? What do they love most? Why have they been here for four years? If they start with a story about why they're there and what really motivates them, they are sharing that culture and it's really, really authentic. Constant communication is vital and this can be done so easily, automatically and seamlessly through an ATS system. So you do need to respond to every single candidate. It's vital and through an ATS you can do that. So candidates come in and they don't even make it to a screening round. You can do one bulk email that sends out to everyone and you can actually make it very personable through the ATS. I can't tell you, uh, I have interviewed for senior roles where I have rejected 400 candidates and quite a number of them come back to me directly to say, thank you, Alex. I've never actually heard back from so many companies that I apply to, let alone the level of detail you've gone into where we bullet point exactly what the hiring manager is looking for in the role and why they were not a fit. Now, if someone's taken the time to interview, give them feedback. They have taken hours out of their personal time to research your company, research your role, research you and your hiring managers. So it's so important to respect that time and give them actual feedback. Was it just that they were the second candidate or was it something in particular they were missing where if they want to apply for that role in the future, they need to go and skill up, get more experience or go and do some kind of accreditation or course. Now, if a candidate is successful, which is the, the most amazing experience, um, one of the things I can't stand is um, doing rejection uh, calls, emails or uh, videos with someone that's interviewed with you. However, when you do have your successful person offered a job, it's so great to get them a contract within minutes. Um, our SLA is by the end of the day that they're offered, but we do try to get to it to them within 10 to 15 minutes of the hiring manager making the offer, which is so impactful. You're so excited. You've just had this offer for a job you've interviewed for. Ping. In your inbox is your contract of offer. How fantastic. Paperless onboarding is also incredible as it impacts the employee experience. So ping, they get their contract of offer, they get a login and everything else is paperless. They can go through your policies, they can onboard, they can do everything prior to starting. If they're finishing off their current job, they can do everything when they start. But everything is there, everything is paperless, simple and importantly, compliant. So would you believe that 86% of people make the decision to stay with a company long-term within their first six months? 
So it's not just about the candidate experience. It's about continuous engagement. So you need to make sure you keep in contact with your employee between that offer and signing of contract and their start date. Let them know what to expect. What's their first day going to look like? Make sure their calendar is already populated with your induction and onboarding sessions, one-on-ones, team huddles, team meetings, social virtual events, and let them know how and when they will receive their technology. These kinds of things not being answered really create anxiety and not a great experience. Also make sure your hiring managers are involved. There's a way through Employment Hero where we send notifications. Alex, remember that Sophie is starting next week. Give her a call or an email or a text message to say how excited you are about her starting just to make sure she knows and does she have any questions. And go that extra mile and send them a welcome pack. It's really impactful. When COVID first hit and we all had to work from home, certainly in New South Wales and across Australia, one of the first things my team did was to get together and we brainstormed and I threw the question out to the team. How do we make a new starter feel welcomed and get a sense of our culture before they even start with us? because they're not going to be starting in the office. So we created a welcome pack that we send to every single employee. To start with, these were manual, thanks to our amazing head of Vibe, Esther. But then we hired 400 people during COVID over the last two years. So the volume became, became kind of untenable and basically a waste of resources. Luckily, we found an Australian-based startup called Swag and Send, and they put together in partnership with us and our incredible marketing team, this wonderful welcome pack. You'll see there it includes cards that outline each of our values. I've actually got them stuck up on my wall behind my computer in my home office, a cap, a laptop cover, some merch, so a water bottle and a t-shirt, a welcome from our CEO. And then you'll see down there in the box where they open, importantly, I think, is that their name is handwritten. Swag and Send put a lot of love into these boxes and they are received so well by our employees, the number of LinkedIn posts that our new starters do. And then we've also done some um, recognition uh, merch and box send outs through Swag and Send. So it's Swag N Send, um, just ping us if you need to know the details. And that's been after um, a particularly hard financial year, for example, we sent um, some t-shirts and a thank you and a candle and a little pack to uh, all of our CX team. So let's talk technology and sourcing talent. Technology, I think, especially for us um, kind of small to medium businesses is underutilized. So you can search for people on LinkedIn that you would call a passive candidate. You can search soon through our ATS system on Employment Hero where we, we will preload candidates that fulfill your needs so that you don't even need to advertise. It will just be there. You can go and find people and interview them immediately. And also remember that technology can amplify the employee experience through so many ways, whether it's paperless onboarding, seamless OKR entry, or a simple system and template that facilitates your weekly one-on-one -on -one with your manager and yourself, which I found so useful during remote work to have that template there. And for those of you that don't know, about seven years ago, I actually implemented Employment Hero and another startup in Sydney prior to joining them. And implementing Employment Hero and that paperless engagement entire system in one was absolutely life-changing for myself, for all hiring managers, and very engaging for all employees. So I talked about an ATS earlier. What is it? It's a recruiting software tool that helps you manage recruitment, candidates, and the entire hiring workflow in one place. So a good ATS obviously is cloud-based and built into your HR platform so that you can manage everything from people applying 
through to are they going on to the next round of screening or do they not meet your needs? Think of it as an all in purpose software kind of system and it allows you to make that communication with candidates constant. So if you look at the way we do it through Employment Hero, you're able to put a role on here once it is approved and give access to the recruiter, the hiring managers, all the people involved. Then you can post it on multiple job boards through the click of a button. So you don't have to go to the back end of seek.com. You don't have to go to the back end of LinkedIn to do multiple posts. You can throw it, do it through a press of a button. Then you can see the candidates flow in and you can assess them, thumbs up, thumbs down, who's going forward, who's not. And then you can do a bulk email to those who are not moving forward and let them know that they're unfortunately not moving forward. We appreciate their interest in Employment Hero um, and thank you again. And then you can move um, your candidates here for the office manager to the next stage and set up virtual interviews with them or in person if that's what you'd prefer. Then you can enter your feedback and send it to the rest of the people on that particular recruitment team so that all of that feedback can be happening asynchronously. And what I try to do with my hiring managers and what I do myself is I actually assign an hour for an interview in my calendar. The interview will generally go for 45 minutes and I commit to that final 15 minutes of finalizing my notes in the ATS system so that I can tag the hiring managers and other people that need to review those notes and we can move on really quickly with the next steps for that candidate. Next up is employee of record. So this is fantastic. We launched global teams when we saw remote work really coming out. And now that there is a huge talent shortage in Australia, which has been um, just emphasized by the lack of people coming in from other countries, we are an employer of record that enables you to hire talent anywhere across the world. So you don't need an entity. We hire them on your behalf through global teams. So whether you're expanding into new markets or struggling to fill open roles, we can connect you with the best talent anywhere and make sure it's legal and ethical. For example, are you having trouble filling an accounting role? We can help you find talent in another market that would fill that role and quite potentially might save you money. And you will be able to have them on your system and treat them as an employee. However, wear the employer of record and take on all of the compliance of uh, employing that employee. So it means that small to medium businesses in Australia or any of our markets can access the best talent anywhere. And there are people all over the world that want to work for Australian companies. So it includes also the remote team member would have access to the full suite of Employment Hero, which helps to keep them engaged through OKRs, reward and recognition, the ability to communicate with their managers, career development discussions, go one for learning, all sorts of fabulous features. So again, just to tell you what Global Teams is all about, it helps you access the best talent anywhere in the world. You can skip the headache. You don't have to use recru recruiters. You don't have to set up your own entity. There's no risk. We do it all for you. It's basically an all-in-one solution where our Global Teams function, manage, pay, motivate and reward your local and global teams together with you as what we would define the host employer. And distributed employment is new to a lot of us. We really only kind of, I guess, discovered it when COVID hit. But it really makes addressing that skills shortage efficient. You can access talent no matter where in the world, or you might define that it's plus or minus where you are in terms of hours. So we say for teams that do need to synchronously communicate with each other, plus or minus four hours um, Australian Eastern Standard Time. It helps you launch into new markets. 
It enables employment mobility. So we've had people go on holidays to Bali who have just introduced a nomad visa and our employees love that. They can go there, take a week off, work a week, take another week off, end up spending four whole weeks in Bali, two of that they've worked remotely, two have been full vacation. It also drives inclusivity and diversity. As I mentioned before, socioeconomic, um, if people can't live in a cosmopolitan city, they're able to be employed by you. So you can hire more diverse people. It also allows you to hire people who might have a disability and they can't commute into a city central headquarters. And carers, someone may be a carer of parents or have children that they need to attend to. And so by allowing them to um, flex their hours and work remotely, you're able to create and provide employment opportunities. And it also reduced the costs per hire. You're not going out and getting a recruiter in the UK or in Singapore or in Manila, and you're not uh, having to pay lawyers to get compliant employment contracts or payroll to make sure they're paid correctly within the jurisdiction that they're in. People analytics. Uh, people analytics has been a massive help and is really growing in maturity across um, human resources, human capital, I think every function that we work in. So people analytics really does help us in attracting and hiring the best talent. So you can use data to get a short list of people. You can leverage insights that have been derived from humor centered data, and you can ensure that the right people are placed in the right jobs. People analytics can also help you prepare for future talent needs. So you can use predictive people analytics to help your business forecast talent needs that are critical to future operations. It also helps you with succession planning. Where are there people that could move into and be promoted to the next opportunity? And then you're hiring at the more junior level. And in terms of employee engagement and career development, that is massive. Um, in the recent studies we've done in Australia and across all countries that we've done our research and insights, in the top three things that any person is looking for in their new job, it's career development. They want to learn, they want to grow, and they want to get to the next step. So that's where succession planning is really vital, as well as having those conversations with your people internally to say, you're ready or these are the three or five things we need to work on to get you to the next step of your career. So another poll, have you or will you consider hiring across borders? I'd be really interested to see um, how many of us are willing to do this and go across borders. Okay, let's show the results. Oh, sorry, a few technical issues, but here we go. So we have 55%. Yes, fantastic. And congratulations on having such an open mind as to where your talent sits. You're doing the best for your business. 25% are saying no. That could be uh, based on preconceived ideas about remote work not working. If you, if you do have those preconceived ideas, please reach out to someone if you're a client in our support team or if you're not a client in our sales team and they can talk you through how remote work can really be based on OKRs and output so that you can hire anyone anywhere in the world. And those who are unsure, please keep your mind open and um, explore those opportunities. It really does open your talent pool. We are a perfect example of that happening. We've hired 400 people over the past uh, two and a half, three years since COVID hit. So moving on, let's talk about employer brand and how do you attract the best people? So 72% of recruiting leaders worldwide agreed that employer brand has a significant impact on hiring. But what is it? It's how your company looks to potential customers, clients, investors, and what we're talking about today, 
How do you appear to candidates? It tells the world who you are as an employer and what your reputation is about and what does your brand stand for? It's about creating a strong business, a business that people want to join. And it's a massive lever for you to attract the right candidates and create success. So it's the message you send to both future people and your internal employees. And I can't stress enough, when you go through creating your employer brand, work really closely with your marketing team to make sure that your external message is consistent with your internal message. That's really vital for your current employees that they're hearing that same message throughout. Uh, we have the most amazing marketing team here at Employment Hero and we're so aligned on EVP. It's really fantastic and it does make an impact. And it is as important for those that you attract to those you don't. And I can't speak highly enough about this. We are so specific in our job ads about wanting people who live our values, that are bold and ambitious, that want to move fast, that want to impact the world, because we don't want to attract people that are not going to be all in and want to join Employment Hero for the right reasons. So what is your EVP or employer value proposition? So a great place to start if you haven't done it is to look at your core values and the expected behaviours of your employees and make sure they're documented for everyone to not just see but champion. And a really great way to do that is to base your reward and recognition program on your values. So people nominate someone, I might nominate Sophia for today's presentation for owning it and just running with it. That's one of our values. And I would nominate her for that. The entire company gets to see that I have nominated her and she sees that going through the system and feels hopefully rewarded by it. So um, the next step, it really is a balance of rewards and benefits that you offer in return for amazing performance within the workplace. So it does go hand in hand, as mentioned, with your external brand. You must make sure they are consistent, but it will really help you attract the top candidates and don't just include the perks and benefits that are tangible include the intangibles like career development and fun in the workplace, virtual, flexibility. Are you offering remote work and people to work from home and not forcing people to come in on certain days of the week? They're all vital to ensure both retention and attracting the right people. There's also some interesting statistics from a recent LinkedIn um, report around the impact your EVP has on actually attracting candidates. So according to this report, the number one obstacle that candidates experience while searching for a job is not knowing what it's actually like to work for that organisation. So I can't recommend highly enough doing some testimonials from actual employees and throwing them on LinkedIn or Seek or any of your social media forums. People are going to go to Instagram. They're going to go to Facebook. So put those videos up there. You can use QuickTime on a desktop. You can use an iPhone. It doesn't have to be expensive. Also, amazingly, candidates trust the company's employees three times more than the company to provide credible information about what it's like to work there. So again, use your employees for them to give testimonials or even posting on LinkedIn when they get promoted is fantastic for your EVP. 75% of job seekers consider an employer's brand before even applying. So they are going to go to your external website. They're going to go to all of your socials. And finally, 52% of candidates first seek out the company's sites and then social media to learn more about you. So what's included in an EVP? Absolutely financial incentives. Um, you want to make sure you're benchmarking and paying at market. You want all of your benefits to be included. Are you covering health insurance, retirement benefits, pensions, superannuation, paid leave, gym, comp company-sponsored holidays, remote work, online yoga, online virtual events? What are all of the various benefits you have? 
Again, going back to career development, it's always in the top three things people are looking for in their new role. So make sure you call that out in your job ads. And even when you do an employee testimonial, have someone who's been through a few different roles and have them speak to those roles and post that video. Engagement on videos is much, much higher than written content. Then talk about your work environment. Again, going back to that, are you providing flexibility? Do you have a great work space that people can go to? If not, is there a shared space they can go to? Are you providing work-life balance? And are you providing remote work? Then of course, you do need to focus on your culture and values. So you want to create positive relationships between your teams. Make sure people are really speaking about your brand, especially on platforms like Glassdoor that just seem to be getting more popular and popular. And finally, your purpose and your mission. This should absolutely drive all of your messaging and it should also be something that you train your hiring managers on assessing candidates for during the interview process. Not only are they aligned to your purpose or mission, but are they passionate about it during the interview? Have they researched it? Do they really understand what you're trying to achieve as an organization and business together? So where do you start? Of course, you ask your employees. So we're very fortunate to have Employment Hero and we have a number of template employees here. For example, there's a theme check-in. We work on quarterly themes. We have a new employee survey that goes out on their three-month anniversary. Um, and then we have a few other surveys um, that we have customised. But there's also, sorry, templates. That one didn't work. And here are the templates, apologies. So there are templates where a lot of research has gone into it. And we had uh, COVID check-ins during COVID. We have an employee engagement survey, a career development survey. And that is the click of a button for you to send that survey out either to the entire company or just to a particular team. Let's touch on referral networks. So your own people are your best assets. So ask them to put referrals on LinkedIn and Glassdoor. Ask someone who's passionate about remote work or your purpose to do a video or a small blog and post it on LinkedIn. They'll end up loving it. And introduce an employee referral bonus. Surely your A players know other A players that they would love to join the team. It's really rewarding, not for them just to see their person join the team, but also to have that cash recognition and reward. And back to video testimonials. I can't speak highly enough about them. The engagement levels we get when we have an employee actually video themselves or we video them is very authentic. As the LinkedIn survey showed, people are three times more likely to be in and believe in your EVP if they hear it from an employee rather than directly from your company. So final takeaways before we move to Q&A. Define your candidate experience and train your hiring managers on the importance of that experience. People talk, People now use online forums like Glassdoor. Make sure candidates and their journey is amazing. Implement technology to streamline your HR processes. If you can't afford a great system like Employment Hero, there are ways to automate. Um, there are ways to survey employees like SurveyMonkey, um, our ATS is not expensive at all if you want to automate uh, tracking people as you're going through that hiring. If you're experiencing a shortage of talent, consider hiring outside your current location. It's made a real impact on our business um, and it's just fabulous. Leverage the attraction of remote work or remote first. We are seeing so many studies, insights, research that is showing if you're not remote first and you're not providing complete flexibility for an employee, you are likely going to lose them. And use those referral networks. Again, um, set up um, a referral bonus, net, uh, bonus within your company. 
we will send you additional resources after this webinar to get you started. So let's move to Q&A. Sorry, I'll just have to pull one thing over. Thank you for your patience. There we go. So we've got 14 questions. The first one, the experience in manufacturing is not quite the same with regards to remote working completely agree and you just need to be upfront about that with your EVP. You also need to, a lot of our clients struggled with this during COVID, you need to make it really clear um, what is required on site versus what is required remote work wise. And you may even want to try throwing in for someone who's in manufacturing or catering and has to be on the job at certain times, perhaps throw in some kind of benefit like, um, you know, you do a rotating half day Fridays for those people. It will really go down very well as a reward. The next one, have you revised your roles or task description to accommodate and support remote work success? We've not gotten around to that yet. It is on our list. However, within all of our job postings, we have absolutely sing to the world that we are remote first. Uh, we have one requirement, and that is that you attend our annual global gathering in person. Other than that, everything is remote. We are trying to improve on asynchronous um, communications as much as possible, as well as one single source of truth. So where do people go to find answers so that when they start, they're not confused about who to talk to or where to go and try and really create a culture of documentation so people really know where to find things and how to get answers. The next one. Hero doesn't have the bulk email yet, does it? We are working on that and um, I'll try and find out a product timeline for you. We are working on it though, because we do know um, that uh, it's very important to have that bulk email. Jennifer, hi Jennifer. When rejecting candidates, if for example, you have gotten to the second or third interview round, is it best to reject them via email or phone? So if they've actually come in in person or attended um, a, a virtual interview, I find it best to video them and, and see their face and give them the feedback. However, if, if you don't have time, it's really easy to set up a phone call, but you want to have that personal interaction with them just to let them know why they're not moving to final round, thank them and hope that they will um, keep an eye out for any roles that you have going forward. The next question, isn't it exposing you to risk to give specific feedback after an interview in case someone claims some court, some kind of discrimination? Obviously wouldn't say anything discriminatory, but this is a risk. Great, um, fantastic, um, sorry, question. And yeah, you do have to be um, very sensitive and aware when you give feedback. However, I can't tell you how much candidates appreciate feedback. It might be you ticked all the boxes on paper, Alex. However, you didn't quite have enough people management experience. Once you get to that level, you would have moved through to the final round. Um, even feedback such as you just didn't come across as having done as much homework, as being as passionate about our brand, that gives them feedback about what to do going forward. So yes, always just be aware to say that, um, you know, you're not hiring someone for a discriminatory reason, which I, I certainly hope no one is. Um, bulk emails, we are working on that through our ATS system to be able to do it. Um, but if you Google it, there will be a way that you can do it um, through a mail merge as well. Natalie, hi Natalie. It used to take between six to eight weeks to recruit an employee from advertising to signing of contract. What is the time frame nowadays given the skill shortage? Great question, Natalie. That is all really contingent on the level of the role and also the complexity of the shortage of talent. So if it's a C seat role or what we would call ELT minus one, so um, ELT uh, plus one, so down one level, that usually best practice takes around 60 to 90 days. You want to make sure you get the right person. I believe the current best practice is 60 days for hiring, and that's from posting the job to contract 
being signed. Hi, Elise. I used to recruit areas in EH, however, I find it frustrating that when I post the ad to seek that I can put questions on there. When will this feature be added? And I'm not using it for senior roles. Oh, Elise, um, I'll find out for you when that's going to happen. Apologies, I didn't realise um, that that was occurring. So I'm guessing you have to go into the back end of Seek and add the questions yourself. So um, I'll just yeah put that note down. Um, applicant questions. Uh, the next one is how does global team work in the context of workers' compensation? That's all provided as part of um, the fact that global teams is the employer of record. They have to provide all contracts, policies, advice to you if you have any ER issues, workers' compensation and also payroll, uh, taxes within the jurisdiction, any compliance requirements within the jurisdiction and also for the role. There could be specific certifications that somebody might need, like a bartender in Australia that needs an RSA. So that all sits with global teams so that um, you are simply the host employer, just managing that person as part of your team. The next one, Holga, what are the OH and S requirements to let people work while holidaying in Bali? If they slip on the way back from the pool or work cover, can you ensure? Yeah, great question. Um, something we are looking into at the moment. So in the interim, you can have someone sign a waiver um, that they understand that they are no longer covered under, for example, the New South Wales workers' compensation. Should they slip over while on holiday or whilst working, their work health, their work safety, is in, in their hands and in their control. Sandra, I voted no, it's because we are predominantly face-to-face -face support workers. Yeah, Sandra, I completely understand. There are absolutely uh, employers out there that cannot um, hire remote employees. However, if you're finding it hard, there are such great support employees and customer service employees. I'll, I'll highlight Manila um, and a lot of Southeast Asia. They are so diligent and really care about the end user and the customer. You will just find yourself never looking back. The next question, hi, Linda. Remote work isn't possible if the employee inherent tasks need to be performed on site, e.g. hardware installation. Agree and disagree, Linda. Um, so we have actually discovered a lot of our hardware installation can be done remotely. Uh, if you do the research with your provider, um, it can be quite easy. They just click on something, then you can run a report and see how many people have not done it. Our IT team then follows up. Um, we have encrypt inscription, for example. Um, we have remote work. We have a lot of things to make sure we're ISO compliant as a company on our laptops. So, um, and it's all done remotely. The next one, our workplace put a ban on work from home as our tradies can't work from home, so it's not fair for the office staff. Any recommendations how to go about this? Quite honestly, I would send a survey out um, and I would include um, your on-site workers to say, how do you feel if we allow office workers um, to work remotely and work from home and flexibly? Because it is something in this day and age that you absolutely need to be doing. You'll lose, um, you'll lose employer brand um, face if you're not offering that and you will absolutely lose candidates as well, unfortunately. As long as you're really clear with tradies, they're in a role where they need to be on site. We do have people who are working on a flex schedule and make sure if they need to contact them, there's an easy seamless way for them to communicate throughout the day. Malcolm, can you set up Employment Hero to send out the cultural surveys automatically in the life cycle? Not just yet, Malcolm, unfortunately. I'll have product look into that, um, but it's pretty easy to go in and set up the date, send it out, and then send an end date for when you're going to close that survey down. Remember to always send reminders to your employees so that they um, know when it is shutting and that their opinion matters. 
Most importantly, if you ever do a survey, make sure you absolutely authentically read out all of the results of that survey to your employees or they will be reluctant to answer another survey. And when you read them out, if you can't action something, just be completely honest about it. We got asked about, um, for example, maybe gym memberships. Unfortunately, our budget can't um, assist with that. So you're saying I've heard you you're also telling them why you can't do something. What's the research behind the remote first statement? I'm not quite sure about that question, but I, I, I think you're asking why am I recommending remote first? We have done a number of studies um, here at Employment Hero um, with our head of insights and all research shows that the majority of Australians want access to remote work and flexible work or they will be looking for a new job with an employer that will provide that. So that's why I am very much an advocate of it. Um, the happiness of our employees has gone up since we introduced remote first work. Um, productivity has gone up. Um, I think family relationship strengths have gone up. Um, there's been a lot of benefits. And hi, John. Is the new employee a standard template on EH? No, it's not, John, but um, I will get the fabulous Sophia um, to send out the template, new starter, or we'll, or we'll just add it as a template. And it's a really great way um, three months down the track to actually check in anonymously with your new starters. How was their interview process? How was their onboarding? What can be improved? And that way you're always improving and you're engaging with your new employees. Hi, Loretta. Does EH have a template engagement survey available on the platform? We sure do. It's under the template um, section of custom surveys and really easy to send out. The next question, is it wrong to communicate people constantly and continuously via emails? Being HR, does it annoy the employees? I would say yes. Um, the reason I say that is uh, we use Slack internally at Employment Hero. It was game changing for me when I started in my role here and it still is today. All internal communications are done through Slack via employees, which leaves your inbox as um, an external facing communications method. So um, you definitely want to be communicating through something like Slack or Teams where it's immediate, things can be pinged, um, Topics can be researched. So if new employees join, they can go into that forum and actually research a topic to get an answer that they might be looking for. So really important that you separate those two um, modes of communication, not just that, through Teams and Slack, especially with remote work, make sure you're setting up some really fun channels and interest groups. So our most popular one is probably animals being cute. Um, I love it. And people post regular photos of their dogs, their cats, whatever animals they have um, and their funny stories about them working from home or what they've gotten up to that day and whilst you don't have notifications turned on so it's not bothering you during the day it's a really nice thing to break up your day at lunchtime or at the end of the day um, have a quick look in at that channel and have a laugh it's really great for employee engagement Jane, is hi Jane is the EH ATS compatible with LinkedIn recruiter software oh I Jane, I've not seen um, the capability of the LinkedIn ATS. Um, main reason being we advertise across a suite of job boards, Seek, um, Indeed, LinkedIn, um, certainly in Southeast Asia, we advertise on particular technical um, job boards that uh, you know engineers and developers are interested in. So that's why we particularly um, want to use an ATS system that allows you with one click of a button to go through and pick you know 20 places that you want to post the ad. The next question, how do you see comp and benefit increment in IT and digitalization industry compared to others? Honestly, I have just seen salaries go up and with unemployment at 3.4% in Australia, um, you are seeing people's requests go up and quite in some roles, in demand jobs, um, we're seeing $50,000 differentials from what someone would expect uh, 12 months ago to what they're asking for now in that particular role. So you really need to have a serious benchmark. Um, you may need to bring some internal people up to benchmark to make sure they're at market and you're not at risk of losing them. 
Hi, Susan. Does Employment Hero have pre-employment checks? Are contracts sent out prior to pre-employment checks being completed, i.e. you mentioned contracts are sent shortly after? Uh, great question, Susan. So no referrals are not built in to Employment Hero. Uh, we have our, for senior roles, we have our hiring managers do at least one directly and the talent acquisition team does the other reference or referral. We absolutely send out our contracts before referrals are done. Uh, we want the candidate experience to be amazing. They are sent that contract with the full understanding that if their references don't work out, um, they will not be employed. And the next question, my employer is in IT. We do consider to hire across the border, but we are not sure of how to put control in place. Currently, we are already adopting working from home and flexibility. Do you have any advice on how to start or what is the most important thing to consider when we hire across the border? Yeah, there's a lot to consider. Um, the first thing we did was put in remote first principles, which is all about um, how do you communicate? When do you use Slack? When do you use a phone call? How do you give feedback? How often do you have a one-on-one -on -one with your manager? Um, how often do you have an all hands? Um, where do things lie? Where do I find things? Where's the single source of truth? And really importantly, if one person dials into a meeting, everybody dials in. That's why you're including everyone so that you don't have 10 people in a meeting room with in-jokes joking around and you've got two people from um, another country dialing in and feeling completely left out. The next one, how do you support clients in legally hiring talent from different countries? Does this entailing registering the business in a specific country? So you don't have to register the business. Employment Hero is registered across 54 countries across the globe where we can employ people on your behalf. So all the compliance and all of the employing rights sit with Employment Hero and the risk, not with you. You're the host employer. So the only thing you're needing to do is give them their OKRs, their goals, their targets, whatever they have to achieve, and make sure you're including them in team meetings and keeping them engaged. The next one I'll keep going just because I blocked out a bit of time after this. How do you suggest we build EVP and employee engagement with low wage factory staff on award rates apart from increasing their wages again ask them send out a survey even if it's a paper survey if they're in a factory and they don't have access or they're not using a computer each and every day ask them what do they love about working there what attracted them them why are they still here and ask them what would make them happier and again you can't give everything to everyone as long as you read out those results from that survey and explain what you can give and what you can't. So for some people, it might be Donut Wednesday. You bring in donuts on a Wednesday morning and the manufacturing staff enjoy breakfast together on the company. And that's not a large expense for a really, really massive give back in terms of employee engagement. Adrian. How do you create a culture of connectivity when you're in a fully working remote environment? Not easy, Adrian, not easy at all. Um, and we certainly are working on it every single day. We look to companies like GitHub as best practice where they do do remote work. We constantly survey our employees. We make sure that managers have regular one-on-ones using our one-on-one -on -one templates on a weekly or bi-weekly cadence. Most teams have daily huddles at least three days a week. We try and encourage managers to do a virtual event at least every fortnight, if not month. That might be a happy hour, it might be a virtual lunch, it might be a coffee break together. And um, one of the great things in a daily huddle is to ask a team member to host for that week and they can pick a topic. Um, this morning's topic for my team was, um, actually, I can't mention what it was just because it was pretty funny. But the day before was, how did you get into your career or what motivated you to get into your career? So it doesn't mean a daily huddle has to be all about business. You can genuinely get to know people by asking random questions and just Google, um, you know, employee engagement, random questions, team building questions. Um, we've gone through your favorite photo on your phone. What was the last photo on your phone? Show it to everyone. What does it mean? Where, are, where were you and why? Uh, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Um, the next one, should we be engaged via emails with the existing employees 
within how many intervals we have to be in touch with employees or candidates. So um, just constant communication with candidates is really important. So, for example, um, we had... Uh, two weeks ago, I had a number of people out in my team, seven to be exact. So more than half the team were down. So via our ATS, I had an automatic message that went to candidates, letting them know that my team was at half capacity. And um, please be understanding, you may not receive a response for another week simply because the team is you know down in terms of capacity so just that constant communication or we've received your application thank you so much you expect to hear back from us in a week as to next steps that as soon as um, something is received is really really powerful the next one um, great insight to constant communication needers is employment hero getting an automated acknowledgement response set up through the system yes absolutely we are um, and thank you site for the question all on the product roadmap um, thanks Erin great to have good feedback and there are a, a number of other questions given I don't want to take up people's time um, given it's five minutes past the hour. So I will work with Sophia um, and we will get everyone answers to these questions um, probably early next week um, just to make sure we do answer all of your questions. I can't thank you all enough for attending. Um, it's always such a pleasure to see people jumping on and to be able to share uh, what we're doing, our insights, what we're learning every day. Someone asked the question as to how you engage employees in a remote world. Happy to admit we're always learning. We've screwed up. Um, we've admitted that to employees again, authenticity and admitting to employees when you haven't done something well, but it's about that constant communication. Have your all hands. Make sure you've got reward and recognition in place. Make sure you've got virtual team bonding um, experiences and opportunities and encourage regional employees who are not in the same team to get together for coffee or lunch or a cocktail. So, for example, if you've got employees in Queensland, your head office is in New South Wales, one's in sales, one's in finance, one's in support, um, one's in another team set up a Slack message for just those people that are in a region and encourage them to set up a monthly or bi-monthly get together that you may fund in part. And it really helps establish relationships within that region and within that group. And they end up becoming a lot of fun and there's a lot of fun banter within those Slack or Teams channels as well. So thanks everyone. I really hope that you um, gained some insight throughout the webinar today. And we really look forward to seeing you on our next session and we will endeavour to get you the resources as well as answers to everything that we couldn't get to this afternoon. Look forward to seeing you again and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Feel free to um, connect to me via LinkedIn. Bye everyone. <laughs>